All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give all praise and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Kapadash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of GMS who rule well, teach well, being great examples for his younger brothers. And peace and blessing, salutation, and hope, like after pushing the word and the truth. And this is a series across the four winds in the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah. Pushing to get up out of here. Shout out to the hopeful like the believers, the listeners, who have came back to the obedience of the scriptures through faith in you. How about Shemel Shah? All right, and what I want to get into today, you know, is the care of the churches. You know, and this is a lesson inspired by, you know, the Apostle Paul's testimony, okay, of the things he was going through, but he still had to maintain the care of the churches. You know, because one thing about this fight of faith you know, as men, you know, the men who are called into this thing, you know, those who really, you know, have a true care, you know, for the church, you know, this is a thing of constant, you know, enduring because we all have our customized hell, you know, and like Elder Pastor Ariomla I've said before, you know, it's easy to be on fire, you know, when everything is on point, you know, uh, everything, you know, you got everything, you in some form of prosperity, you know, things are going your way, all right, but the true test, you know, is to stay on fire when it gets chaotic in the background, you know, and it happens, you know, everyone has their season, okay, to where they're being tested, they're being tried, you know, they've been pulled, you know, many different directions, and the Lord, all right, is seeing Okay, can he keep that same energy as when things were copacetic? Okay, I'm going to allow things, you know, to get unstable. Okay, to see if, if you know, the Lord will allow things to get stable to see if we going to move. It's always about us, you know, in every circumstance and everything that we go through. Okay, the Lord is always gauging us, you know. We're, okay, um... We should be, when, whenever we go through particular things or whenever situations happen, you know, we always have to gauge ourselves how we react. You know, how did we react in this situation compared to last time? Okay, and that's really examining ourselves. Okay, the only really way to examine ourselves is the Lord has to test us. <laughs> okay. That's why they even have, you know, what you call an exam, okay? Well, what, what what's another thing of exam? Another word for exam is test, you know? So the true way to examine ourselves is when we're being tested, okay? Examining our reaction, okay, to how we reacted previously in the same situation, you know? So you go here, 2 Corinthians 11 and um, 22. I started 23. And it says, uh, I started at 22. It says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they the ministers of Hamasiah? I speak as a fool. I am more and labors more abundant and stripes above measure and prisons more frequent and deaths off. So this is Apostle Paul going into his testimony, you know, because as he's writing his letter, because this is the second letter to Corinth, okay, and you will have, you know, certain members of the church buck up, you know, say, look, slick things about, you know, Paul's authority, is he really an apostle, okay, so he's pretty much going through his testimony, you know, about, uh, you know, a, a apostle Paul solid. If you really get into the scriptures, man, hey, the Lord was dealing with the Apostle Paul in, in a very, you know, special way. Okay? And he had to be greatly humble, and he was. You see? And through it all, okay, we're going to keep reading. It says of the Jews, five times received our 40 stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with a rod once. Was I stoned thrice or three times? I suffered shipwreck a night and day. I have been in the deep, and journey is often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils 
in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils or, or dangers amongst uh, false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, and watching often, in hunger and thirst and fasting often, and cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without that which cometh on, upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Okay? So the Apostle Paul, he was being beat, getting whipped. Okay? Shipwrecked. Not knowing when he was going to eat again. Okay? In freezing cold conditions. <laughs> you see? Traveling, you know, on uh, uh, these journeys. And traveling back then was far different. Okay, here it is. You have Jake complaining about having to drive, you know, 45 minutes to a camp. Well, imagine traveling 45 days through ship and, and, and on land walking. Okay, to get to a certain destination, man. Okay, and one thing also, too, man, you know, Western culture, you know, has gotten everyone so soft, man. You know, we can find ourselves, you know, complaining. You know about the pettiest things but when you really look at it man okay from a different outlook man especially when you read this man we don't have it nowhere near as bad as they had it man we got way more convenience okay so apostle paul went through all those things and still had the care of the churches and that's a testimony man and it's also condemnation and we call ourselves making excuses of why we can't do, all right, we can't fulfill our office in this ministry, man. Hey, the Lord not having it, man. Okay? It's going to be because, as the Apostle Paul said also, you know, matter of fact, let's just get it. Let's read what he said. It's, um, it's 1 Corinthians. All right, this is on First Corinthians uh, 7 and 29. It says, But I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none. Okay? So, when you read verse 29 in NLT, it says, But let me say this, dear brothers, the time that remains is very short. So from now on, those with wives should not focus only on their marriage. Now, that doesn't mean that you just neglect your marriage, okay? But we in situations to where, you know, we're battling, you know, um, the flesh. You know, we're dealing with the chastisement, you know, of the Lord. We're dealing with getting our daily bread. And we also still have the care of the churches, man. So... Sometimes, you know, hey, the wife get cut out, you know, because one thing that can't be cut out is our office in this ministry. They can't be cut out. Okay, you got a wife or family, you know, say hey, sometimes certain things get counseled. Sometimes certain things get cut out because the ministry can't get cut out. We can't come in short when it comes to the ministry, man. You know, we have to fulfill our office. We still have you know, I, um, you know, duties within our office, man, pertaining to each, you know, um, portion that each brother has. Okay. Verse 30 says, and they that weep as though they weep not, and they that rejoice as, as though they regard, as they, as they rejoice not, and they that buy as though they possess it not. Yeah, man. So there come times to where, you know, we have to, we have to be numb. To the majority of the situations outside this truth, man. You know, there are going to be times where hey, we're operating on very central. Okay? It comes time, it will be tight. You see? And we still got to hold down, you know, our post in this faith. That's, that's, that's what's required. <laughs> okay? So you look at what our forefathers went through. Okay, and still held down their post. All right, 
<laughs> so we have is absolutely no excuse. And the Lord, He not He not dealing with excuses, man. Okay, let's um go back to um. Say Corinthians. Say Corinthians eleven. All right. Let's say Corinthians eleven. And twenty eight it says, Besides those things that are without, okay, that which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches, man. So he still, you know, had his office to hold down. Regardless of what he was going through, you know, in his day to day. Now, there are some situations to where, you know, he, he, the Lord will make it to where, you know, he wants us to, you know, sit down and reflect. Okay. But then there's times when the Lord wants us to persevere and still push in the midst of the fight. You know, sometimes there's certain brothers, you know, the Lord has to slow down. Okay? And then the most of the time, the Lord, he wants us to fight. You know, this is the, the fight, you know, that we constantly speak about. I say the fight is to stay all right on point in the chaos. You see, the, the fight of faith is going to have faith, you know, in the, the, the worst time ever. Okay, when they when when we, we can't physically see a way, when we can't practically see a way, you know, this is Second Ezra chapter seven, verse. Um, I started fifty seven. It said, "Then answer he me and said, uh, this is you the archangel speaking to Ezra. This is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight." That if he be overcome, he shall suffer, all right, that thou, uh, as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say. So this is a battle. And we can't be overcome, okay, by the cares of this life. We can't be overcome, okay, by, you know, being entangled, Okay. Because the easiest thing to do is just to take this life too serious, man. Now, we have to be responsible. We always push it, you know. We always balance it out. But, of, of course, be responsible. Of course, be wise in how you move. Okay? Of course, you know, we should understand, you know, how things practically work when it comes to money, you know, credit, you know, um, uh, 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 handling our overheads. Okay? But the thing that helps out with all that, man, is just simple living. You know, being content. Okay? With a daily bread and, you know, a few simple pleasures. You see? So, the battle, you know, the condition of the battle is us being in this flesh. Okay? Having to, you know, keep the flesh, <laughs> okay, in check. Then as we keeping the flesh in check, we still got to go get our daily bread, okay? We still got, you know, our day-to-day -day affairs and the care of the churches, you know? And the, and the battle is to constantly balance all these things, okay? But if there's ever something lacking, we know that this ministry can't be the thing that's lacking, you know? The care of the churches can't be the thing that's lacking. Okay? Verse 58 said that if he be overcome, he shall suffer as thou hast said. But if he get the victory, he shall receive the thing that I say, man. So this is an actual fight, man. You know, you be tired, you know. Hey, this, <laughs> who, who, who's fighting and not tired? Okay? And we push balance, you know, get rest, you know. Get, get, get you, get you, you know, some quality sleep, okay? Because hey, that sleep resets us, you know, to be productive, you know, because if we're unbalanced in our, you know, health, 
okay we're not operating you know um as our best self you know we're not teaching as as our most potent as potent as we can be you know so health you know plays a factor in these things man and it's all a balance <laughs> you see it's all a balance man and this is just you know this is what goes into you know being noble you know because being high born is a lot required you know when you're high born people you know always you know they just think about you know the status and the perks but now nah, man they, the higher rank the more people are looking to you okay so that's the um point lord will you brothers all right and you social edify till next time i say shalom